Hi friends. The time has arrived. I've been holding off on this video for quite some time because it would force me, kind of, to pick my favorite child. All my Pat McGrath Mothership Pals are my favorite children. And if it's your first time here, hi, welcome. Kinky Sweat, you're like, what does that mean? Well. Kinky hair, sweat life, I love all things movement of beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeups, you can head over to my Instagram. I love Pat McGrath. I got my Divine Rose poster right behind me. Mother has sent me some PR. I think the first item was Divine Rose 2. Before that, I have purchased all my Pat McGrath palettes and it was love at first blend. First swatch, first application, first palette opening. Pat McGrath is considered to be one of the most influential makeup artist of our time. I won't go into full detail. I mean, you could read about her on the internet. However, she is known for her mother ship palettes. These beautifully designed palettes right here. This is a ranking video where just my opinion, I rank all of mother's mothership palettes. I'm not including the abbreviated motherships fan. I'm sorry. I don't consider these to be in the same experience category. It's a different feel. It's a different vibe. I don't want to rank these in the same way. I'm going to rank her 10 pan mothership palettes. Okay. I hope you're all right with that. I'll just make another video. Is it going to take me another year? I don't know. It just might. <laughs> I wanted to rank her big mama mothership palettes because it houses not only her matte shimmer multi-metallic blitz astral shades again i think it's only fair to rank the palettes among the ones that are the same in terms of that presentation and you're like you don't have any eyeshadow on your eyes alicia what's going on with that well i thought i would wait until the very end to reveal which mothership for me is number one and if i had applied it fam you would know you would know. You probably know now, but that's okay. And of course, shout out to Kelsey Brianna J who started the ranking video genre of things. I don't know what year she uploaded her first ranking video, but it was a good idea, KBJ. <sniffs> Thankful for you. I do have a video on my channel where I presented each palace, including the abbreviated mothership ones, which mothership is best for you. I wanted to make a resource for those who encountered Pat McGrath for the first time and they just didn't know where to go in regards to her eyeshadow palace, at least. This is a video where I'm going to tell you which is my least favorite all the way down to the fave. And again, as I mentioned already, it was hard to do. I love all of them. Because I'm ranking one least favorite, doesn't mean it's bad. It just means it's my least favorite or I consider one I wouldn't use as often. It doesn't rev up the engine, right? Like my fave does. And these are always interesting because everyone has a different experience, different say in the matter. So I'm very excited to present this ranking video. Finally, you're like, Aliza, I've been, I've been asking for this for a very long time. I know. I'm so sorry. You're gonna die when you see what's number eight. I thought about this. I even changed my mind just now looking at everything. You know, I swatched a couple of things. Just hear me out, fam. Hear me out why I, why I ranked Divine Rose 1 as number eight. Let me just start by saying this is a beautiful palette. I think this is one of her more monochromatic offerings. You have the lavender, the soft burgundy, these beautiful just emollient metallics here that you can buff throughout the crease and just have the one and done looks. This duochrome shade is absolutely just beautifully outstanding. The reason why I ranked this number eight is because you have three duplicates in here. You have Iridescent Pink 003 that is featured in her Highlighter Trio palette. You have Astral Solstice, which is in Midnight Sun, and you have Rose Dusk, which is in Sublime 2. That's usually not a problem. It's not a problem, but I feel the other palettes that have all of the new shades for me rank a little higher. Again, like I said before, ranking this number eight on my list does not mean it is a bad palette. In fact, this is the one I think many people really loved because it was subtle. It wasn't too much. 
the sparkly arkly shade the only one here is astral solstice iridescent pink 003 is a very very lightweight iridescent shade right you could layer it over many in here you could have that light pink flip whereas i think her other motherships have those heavier duochrome actual moments that really just bring the palette up in front of your face this is why i ranked it number eight as much as i love it for me and when i think pat mcgrath this is definitely one of her more subtle offerings is a little more low-key it's beautiful absolutely but for me number eight number seven was a little tough i'm juggling between the two in my head right now it's hard for me to pick but i think i'm gonna go with this one subliminal subliminal is outstandingly beautiful it was featured with the first three that released in 2017 my goodness it feels like a decade ago this is a beautiful palette and every time i use subliminal i immediately think why i don't use it more often it's definitely on the cooler side of the spectrum and you immediately identify the star shade here which is blitz blue one of the richest blues I have in my entire collection. The shine, the depth, the feel. And of course, your astral shades here, which are remarkable. You have the more lavender blue flip. You have this one here that just sparkles up blitz blue. Look at that. It brings it forward. It gives it more pizzazz. I find the astral shades very easy to use. It could be debatable among many of you. <laughs> I know. I find if you tap once and release, that's all you need. The minute you start rubbing and swirling and put all that product on your lid, yeah, you're gonna run into problems, okay? You got too much product on your finger. You tap and release and that's all you need. Look at that, just enough to melt the product onto your eyelid and it stays. You just can't use too much. But anyway, I digress. These cooler tone mattes I feel are just beautiful. They really build a multi-dimensional cool eye. But the shades here, like this lavender shade, is just gorgeous. The more taupe is also beautiful and they all pair so well so well you're not just gonna get gray you're gonna get a little bit more than that so that's why although i'm ranking it at seven i feel this is a phenomenal color story it's cool leaning but it's still a lot of fun you know what i'm saying which leads me to number six we're going eight through one okay this was the palette out of the three that sold out first it is sublime look how beautiful this is now I was actually gonna rank this lower but when I started swatching it and really understanding again what a genius pad is I immediately realized yes although blitz emerald can be a lot you see how you take that shade out and it is your everyday palette from Pat is your everyday palette even though blitz emerald is a lot it's so beautiful and it's almost like here on purpose you have like this rose theme this is the leaves and then everything else is like what a rose could be in terms of color rose dusk which is what you saw exists in divine rose one this is where it was first released in sublime look how beautiful those two look together and you have this beautifully deep matte shade my gosh i mean this builds up the color the depth really quickly and the bronze shade this is the multi-metallic shade. Look how just, this looks like metal. It looks like actual metal. And of course, the actual shade here, it goes from like pink to gold. Whatever it's doing, it's just marvelous. And the one under is more of like a pink flip. So these, I feel, you could combine them in several ways, really heighten up the shine, heighten up the dazzle, or keep it cool with the more subtle shimmers here. Copper Rose is just so beautiful as a blush or even as a highlight shade. Skin Show Nude Shade is more of like a pinky champagne that I feel could look really beautiful on the cheekbones. So I consider this to be, well, actually, Fun fact, all of Pat's Mothership palettes are formulated and designed to be artist palettes. You can use these shades on your face, okay? You can even use the actual shades on your face. It's a lot, 
but you could go there if you wanted to. I love to apply copper rose on the cheeks, rose dusk on the cheeks. Again, this on the cheekbones is absolutely marvelous. If anything, if, if, if anything, this is definitely a more practical choice than the palette I chose to be number one on this ranking list. I understand that, I recognize that, but because I'm so stubborn, I'm placing this at six. I think it's still a good place on the list, you know what I'm saying, fam. Exceptional palette, exceptional color story. Say no more. Now, this next one though, you're really gonna, you're really gonna kill me. In fact, let's take a stretch break, hold on. Ooh, getting ready for these comments. I, I decided to place bronze seduction right where it belongs. Number five. Listen, okay, I didn't see a lot of ranking lists because I didn't want it, I didn't want it to disrupt my thought process. I'm pretty sure, however, a lot of people ranked Bronze Seduction Mothership 5 highly. I know. Let me go over the reasons why. When Bronze Seduction came out, everyone was like, oh my gosh. Besides Sublime, I think Bronze Seduction offered an opportunity for someone to give Pat McGrath the chance because they felt this color story was a little more approachable. When you use it, however, when I used it, I thought, and this is what my girl Casey and I agree on, this is a holiday palette. I do not consider this at all to be everyday friendly. Now I'm not saying that's the reason why people ranked it highly. I truly feel people ranked it highly because of Blitz Flame and the star of the show, Fire Opal. That actual shade gets everyone going, understandably so. Fire Opal, I think, is one of Pat's most successful and beautifully formulated astral shades out of her entire mothership portfolio. However, I don't think this is as user-friendly as people think. And the reason why is, I don't know if it's because it's my palette, okay? These two heavy glitter texture shades that I can't identify, I don't really know what happened here. I think these were meant to be more smooth. They weren't meant to be this textured. So these are the two shades that if you're not careful, you really have to blend them in right? They're not as seamless as her other metallic shades, which for me that eliminates two shades from the palette that I'm not crazy about. And all I'm left with is Blitz Flame, the pink rose gold, I believe. This is the rose gold shade, which I love. Blitz Flame, beautiful, beautiful red. You know, this could be really intense, right? This is going to be an intense eye look. The bats in here which I love, you know, especially if you're on the deeper part of the spectrum, these are gonna give it to you. This shade right here, I think this is either Disobedient or one of the other ones. This has crazy depth, okay? The other one, even though it shows up light in the pan, that gives you crazy depth also. So there's no middle ground here with Bronze Seduction. You're either gonna go really smoky or really color heavy. And again, Fire Opal is exceptionally beautiful. Astral Lunal Gold, exceptionally beautiful, okay? I get it, I understand. I'm not in that mindset all the time. I have to be in a certain headspace to really dive into what Broad Seduction has to offer. And while I understand everyone's love for this palette, some of the textures are not my favorite. I don't gravitate toward this palette all the time like I do with the other ones that I ranked a little higher. That's what I'm saying. So say what you must, say what you must. I'm probably the only one that put Bronze Seduction at five, okay? But I have my reasons, that's it. What I will, however, rank for number four is my ex, <laughs> Subversive Mothership 3. This palette houses what I consider to be two of the most iconic Pat McGrath shades out of her entire catalog is Night Creature and Gigabyte. These two shades right here, just amazing. I mean, I can explain the feelings I get when I see these shades. It's just like, 
And this palette is very special to me because it was my first Mothership palette that I bought. And of course, I just bought all of them thereafter. When I tried on this shade, Gigabyte, Night Creature? <laughs> Lazarus too. Lazarus is a beautifully deep metallic shade. Look at that sheen all over the lid. You don't, you don't need much. You just apply that all over your lid. Your smoky eye is done. The Skin Show Nude shade, which was one of the deciding factors for me as to why I chose this palette first, is this was the more champagne out of all the Skin Show Nude shades from subliminal <laughs> subliminal sublime and subversive i really like this shade as a highlight shade for me and that's why i chose that metallic or rather this palette first but i love it because there's so much going on i feel like subliminal was more color specific divine rose one was really more color specific i would say the same about sublime this this is giving you a lot and i love it you go blue you could go regular daily brown smoky. You could go super gold olive. You could go like that beautiful magenta. You can go any which way. And no matter how you combine these shades, it's just going to be phenomenally beautiful. Just look. This actual shade here, absolutely gorgeous. So shiny. And when you combine it with, oh, when you combine it with Night Creature, look what it does. It just adds that extra, mm, extra shine, that boost, okay? I don't know what else to say. This is one of my standout favorites. I absolutely love Subversive, even though it's not my number one. It kind of always will be, again, it's my first Mothership palette. Oh my goodness me. Like, can you even? I don't know what's going on right now. People are playing music. You know what? As long as my mic doesn't pick it up, we're good to go. We're down to the last three. This was tough. I'm even questioning myself as I speak. I do think number three has to go to Decadence. Hear me out. While I understand Decadence is more limited than many of the palettes I just presented lower on the ranking list. For instance, I went on and on and on about how versatile Sublime is. You could use it on face and eye. Why would you then put that palette lower than Decadence? Decadence for me, although is one formula that's presented in this palette, is her metallic formula that is absolutely outstandingly gorgeous. I truly consider this to be her jewelry box for eyeshadows. Let me just show you all the shades presented in here. And people were asking me like, how can you just say this is a one and done palette? You can apply any of these shades all over your lid or a combination of these shades and have a look. This Blue Blood, just look how smooth Blue Blood is. Did I say more? Yes, it doesn't have the sparkly, arkly, astral blitz, whatever. Yes, they might not be as razzle dazzle. Not everyone wants the razzle dazzle they still want a little bit of shine they want that smoothness they want that beautiful blend you have it here with this metallic formula and again it just streamlines your experience and your use you could just pick any shade combine it in however you want for instance we just picked up blue blood let's say we wanted to pick this shade up the way they just combine like you inner corner, lower lash line, lid, whatever you want to do. And the reason why I just love this formula is how smooth it is. Let me show you. Lapis Luxury, this lagoon type of blue. The moment you start blending it out, look, it just, it just keeps going and going and going all over your lid. Look at the edges. You, you don't need a map for that. You need a map for that. If you wanted, you could apply. Let me see here. I think this is Underworld. I forgot. This is the deeper blue. You could apply this right over Lapis Luxury. If you wanted a little bit of depth, look at that beautiful gradient right there. One of the most sophisticated metallic formulas I have ever encountered, I have in my collection. That's it. This is so easy to use. You have the beautiful black lacquer, gold lining, whatever, with the palette design. 
and you just have these jewel shades. Now I get it. Some of them are a little tricky. Like if you wanted to wear sterling silver all over your lid, you could get away with it. You could, but let me tell you, this is this is like New Year foil and we're putting the jewelry on our lids, okay, with this shade. The shine is amazing. Gold standard, forget it. Another shade, could be a lot, could be a lot on its own, but man, it's worth it. So that's why I picked it to be at number three, debatable. I get it, debatable. But when I think about how easy it is to use, just how beautifully formulated the metallics are, the colors are iconic. Like they're just stars. This I consider to be like an all-star palette. You know what I'm saying? Because the formula is the same, but you have all these different shades in that same formula. It's like the best all-star team for decadence for me. And the fact that, oh my gosh, when that palette sold out, everyone was so upset. It released with Star Wars, people were upset. It came back again, people were upset. It's just like, oh my God, I'm happy Pat brought it back. I have like three of them. Decadence for me, number three. It belongs there. That's what I feel in my heart, okay? Number two. I feel you probably already know what number one is gonna be once I present number two, but let's just pretend like we don't. <sighs> Divine Rose 2. What can I say? I can understand why someone else will rank this lower because the same arguments I had for Divine Rose 1, I'll call myself out right here and now, fam. This is definitely monochromatic. People were like, I don't like the pinks. It's just too much. I get it. But this is where Pat introduced this shade. Oh my goodness. Now the reason why I prefer Divine Rose 2 over Divine Rose 1 is that I could get a little bit of the Divine Rose 1 experience, you know what I'm saying, from Eleganza. But I have Rose Seduction and I have Naked Blush and I have all these other shades. And also when I attended Pat's masterclass on the Zoom Zoom, a lot of her artists gave me such great ideas. For instance, I think it was Leticia who combine Rose Seduction with Eleganza, oh my gosh, when you combine these two, you get a totally different color. And I think it's just so much fun to do that with this palette. Naked blush on your cheeks, forget it. This shade right here on the cheekbones, forget it. The trio chrome. This for Alicia, how dare you? Sextra terrestrial trio chrome. Are we doing it? Yes, we are. It goes from like pink to green. We all hope, we all hope that Mama Pat makes more shades in this formula. Astral Pink Moon, I think a little smoother than my beloved Astral Solstice. I'll give it that. It's so beautifully sparkly. I picked up way too much, but you can tap that over any of the shades in here and just look how it makes it shine. It's so gorgeous on the cheekbones. I think, I forgot who it was. This shade here is more rose gold. I much prefer this color over the one that exists in Bronze Seduction. Bronze Seduction is a little more pink, whereas this has like a little more copper to it. Absolutely amazing. Rose Seduction, forget it as a blush. You could go there if you wanted. Apply it high on the cheekbones, around the temples, and make that just beautiful blush bracket of color. This is one of my most favorite color stories. I like it better than Bra Seduction. Like, I like, I love this. I feel I could use it more. I feel I can make this every day or I can make this powwow. You could get the Sparkly Arkly from the Astral Pink Moon shade and the Trio Chrome, please. There's really not much to say because this palette and every time I cracked into this palette, I'm just like, oh, I'm gonna use it more often is absolutely amazing. All the formulas in here are beautiful. Like I feel people even forgave the actual shade in here because I do think this was a little smoother than the huge and it's just so easy to use. And the metallics in here, oh, just please. Like, are you kidding me? I love how you got a little of the silvery cool. You got more of the warm plum. You got both of them in there. I like how they're only two mattes and hear me out. I know people love mattes, 
But again, like I mentioned before, Pat's metallic shade is so easy to manipulate and blend. You don't need a matte shade to blend out the edges for her metallics. You could just go in with the metallics all by themselves and then use the matte just to blend the edges very lightly if you wanted. Or you just keep the matte out of it all together and really commit to that shade. If you want to steer the eye look cooler or more intense, then you bring in the matte shades. You have that versatility with her formula and especially with this offering, yes, more monochromatic than the huge, but I still think quite comprehensive for how monochromatic it is. You get, I don't, do you get that? That's why I have this as number two, which leads us to our number one. Could it have been any other? I fight for Midnight Sun so hard. I think because maybe Pat named this palette her actual inspiration, meaning subliminal, sublime, subversive. Those were words. I don't know what was in her head when she was creating these palettes, putting together the shades and the textures, what she had in mind, what subversive meant to her and why she came up with Night Creature and Gigabyte. I don't know. But when I saw the words Midnight Sun and I saw images of Midnight Sun, I immediately just connected. I connected not only with the box that yes, is a version of Brown Seduction, but this one is so pretty that I saw the palette and I just thought, yes. And you're like, but Alicia, you know, wouldn't you rank a palette that you could use on face and eyes? much like the same argument you can hold for decadence. That is a valid question, a valid concern. I went with Midnight Sun for the number one spot on this ranking list because I feel this holds such a strong connection to the inspiration that the colors in here are so sophisticated, so well thought out. No matter how you combine these shades, it's going to be beautifully, subtle, but just have such magic to it. I feel these shades are so underrated. For instance, the tone of Vermilion Venom. You see that it's like a brick red, but it has such a beautiful earthiness to it that when you pair it with whether it's this shade here or what I did here, what is Blood Moon? Oh my God, Blood, Blood Moon, the shine and the copper flecks in there. Oh, so beautiful. Antique gold, which I understand. I think people gave this palette a lot of slack because it didn't have the astral shades found in Bronze Seduction in Subversive, Sublime, or Subliminal. You know what? I want to put them together. Watch. This is Jubilee from Midnight Sun. This is Astral Lunal Gold from Bronze Seduction. Yes, it makes Jubilee look dull and boring, but I I like how it's muted on purpose. I do. I love that it's not crazy. And yes, could I apply Astral Lunal Gold on top of Jubilee? Realistically, sure, because I have both palettes. But I appreciate Jubilee. I do. I know it's not the shiniest of all the pat shades, but again, I just love like there's like an antique hue to it and it's not super yellow gold like gold standard and a lot of the other gold found in Pat's palettes. I didn't apply Wicked Envy on my lids. I have Blood Moon here and I have, I believe is, hold on, Bronze Eclipse in between Extreme Dusk. I wanted to go that route, but Wicked Envy, this beautiful olive with the gold flecks in here, it's just, I feel the theme of Midnight Sun is so illustrious, but Pat managed to create a palette that captures that vibe and mood, but make it still wearable. It's more wearable than Divine Rose 2, it's more wearable than the Subversive, more wearable than Bronze Reduction, okay? But it's not monochromatic, right? It's not monochromatic like Divine Rose 1 and 2. You have different moments in here that you can make it more red copper, you can make it more smoky. You could go totally left field with the Blitz Violet Orchid. This shade, I never ever encountered like 
a lavender periwinkle that stayed true to that color when you applied it on the lower lash line. I have a lot of midnight sun videos on my channel. I have comparison videos. I have the the video I did exclusively with Midnight Sun. I went back into Midnight Sun. I'll put all those videos down below so you could take a look and you could see these shadows in action more. It's not with this camera, but you know what? I could do it again. It's not a problem. I don't know what else to say because I've explained this point of view several times, but if it's your first time hearing it, hey, welcome again. Midnight Sun is my number one pat palette because of all the reasons I listed, because you just really need to tune in to what Pat was doing. And I think people get distracted with the razzle dazzle, with the shine, with the pigmentation this and pigmentation that. Sometimes it's not about that. And while I understand those are reasons why someone would buy a palette, why you would present those reasons for a consumer to buy your palette, I do think this offers another perspective that just because it's not shiny, just because it's not razzle dazzle, doesn't mean it's not beautiful, doesn't mean it doesn't have anything to offer, doesn't mean that it's useless. You have such beautiful moments in this palette and Astral Solstice, I do think, yes, it might not be the smoothest, it has, you know, it has punch. However, I do think, again, if you're just really careful with how much you pick up, I mean, look at that. It's just beautifully shiny. I just pat it down right here on the inner part of my eye to give it that sparkle. I could even, you know what, I'm gonna do that right now. I apply Skin Show Moon Glow as my highlight. I'll apply Astral Solstice right here on the cheek. Just use the finger. I'm bringing in a little bit of Copper Rose from our friend Sublime, just right here. Give us some love, you know what I'm saying? Gotta put Astral Solstice on this side now, you can't have it any other way. I get it, Fire Opal has a dual chrome thing going on, VR Nectar, I forgot if that was in Subversive or Sublime, but it has that gold to pink shift. I understand Astral Solstice is not the most colorful babe on the block, but it's giving us that starlight twinkle effect, which I feel aligns with Midnight Sun. You see the stars in the sky. It makes sense. Why would that be any other color? This is why I love Midnight Sun so much. I think, again, it just strongly connects to its foundation, to its inspiration, and I immediately feel that I'm there. When I open the palette, I am seeing a Midnight Sun, okay? Put it on my eyes, no matter how you combine these shades, I do feel, yes, unfortunately, there were inconsistencies in the palette. The palette I purchased from Pat McGrath, the mattes were very hard pressed. And I figured that out because when I swatched it in store at Sephora, those were very soft. Pat McGrath Labs sent me another palette and the mattes from this palette have a little more pigmentation. So I'm sorry if you underwent the same thing. And again, that could have happened to me with Bronze Seduction. I'd never asked for another palette because I thought that's how those metallics were. But I digress. Midnight Sun is my number one. And that is it fam. I realized I could have integrated the holiday quads from last year, but I'm not going to do that. I would actually put that in another video. I will rank the three quads from last year and the ones from this year in one video. I will rank the abbreviated motherships in another video. I wanted to tackle the 10 pan palettes because I just wanted to keep it simple. Okay, I'll be here all day. Those are my rankings. I feel... I could have gone a lot of ways with this, but this is what I was feeling today. This is what the thought process led me to. So let me know at least your top three mothership palettes. Three, two, one. What's your number one, your number two, your number three, okay? Hopefully I won't take too long to present the other ranking videos, but until then fam, that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I'll see you in here again with another review tutorial, Pat McGrath eyeshadow palette ranking video, monthly favorites, weekly vlog, or a live chit chat, which will be coming to you soon. I'm so sorry about the delay. Take care and I'll see you again soon. Alicia, how dare you? Sextra terrestrial, trio chrome. Thank you.